Welcome to a quick video from Julian's Random Projects. Uh, I was in the middle of uh, moving some things around and cleaning up my solar setup that I have out here in the garage. Um, I just wanted to do a quick video. I figured I'm in the middle of doing it. I might as well you know, show some people. You guys might find this interesting. Uh, I'll, there's a lot of videos of people's solar setups, but I, uh, I guess the only thing that's unique about mine uh, would be two, two things. One, the, the batteries I'm using, I haven't seen anybody review them, uh, so I thought that'd be, I'd chime in and say that, you know, give you guys an idea of my experience with these batteries. And then also that, um, a, a quick, quick rundown for people that don't know what a, you know, a normal solar setup looks like. You have, uh, or I have, my solar panels coming in here to a, a breaker box, and uh, that then feeds into a charge controller, and then that charge controller then goes through uh, a marine style DC disconnect uh, here. These are really affordable and um, also very effective, um, you know, good beefy switches here. Then those go down to, on the ground to where I was keeping my batteries here on the concrete um, and insert comments from people on YouTube about how I shouldn't be keeping batteries on concrete. Um, it's actually bullshit and they perform better <laughs> because my floor helps balance out the uh, the temperature in those. So then, the, the, then all that energy after charged into the batteries uh, then goes into the load. The load in this case is a, a pure sine wave inverter from a company called Go Power. It's an awesome, awesome inverter. Uh, puts out better, uh, better conditioned uh, AC power than I'm actually getting from the grid. It's much cleaner uh, looking when I look at it with an oscope. Uh, and then I have that coming into a um, also from Go uh, Go Power. This is designed for for RV uh, uh, for recreational vehicles when they connect to what they call shore power or or shore resources uh, like water and electricity and stuff. Um, this box would detect that and it's got a relay and then it clicks over to uh, the. Uh, the, the grid basically, you know, you, you pull up to like an RV park and they've got a, a jack for you to plug into, it'll click over to that, right? So I'm using that in in the reverse here. Um, it de it detects my my AC coming out of my grid inverter and if, if this were to ever fail, meaning I don't have AC coming out of here, then this clicks over to grid. So it's the opposite in my, my example. And that's more happy wife kind of, this like wife insurance right here. Because I don't want to be traveling for work or or something and my, my goofy solar rig that I've put together myself fails for some reason. And then now the kitchen isn't you know working. And that's the other unique thing about my setup is that all of this solar power uh, that comes in is then is routed into uh, another junction box so I can disconnect solar here if I want to. Um, and then that travels back into another side of this wall. Uh, very boring. Everyone has one so you've seen it. It's my normal utility panel. And uh, in there, this solar, all this solar setup drives just the breakers that go to the kitchen. So my entire kitchen is running on solar. So that's a refrigerator, that's coffee maker, lights, uh, microwave, you know, blender when the wife uses it, just, you know, normal stuff. The refrigerator is the big thing. That's like the constant load that's always on this system. And, uh, you know, day to day, it uses maybe three kilowatts, kilowatt hours each day, which is not a lot. Um, uh, but so this is a very modest uh, solar setup, actually. Uh, but it meets my needs and it's it was sort of the, you know, I have a budget for solar. What do I want to do? Uh, I wasn't happy with the whole house solar solutions because they went out when the power goes out. Uh, that's a common um, misconception. People think that if you have solar that you'll be fine when the power goes out. And if you don't have a battery bank or you're not doing something off, you know, this like hybrid off-grid situation, then that's not true. They, they, you don't have power like everybody else. I didn't like that and I also thought, well, if the entire uh, you know, grid goes down, what do I actually need? And it was really about food prep and you know keeping stuff cold just as a morale booster. And it's not, I don't need the whole house to have lights on necessarily, but in the kitchen it would be nice. Um, and actually, if you have extended periods of time where you have no power, you don't want to be the one house in your entire block that is glowing and lit up. It's it's not it attracts the wrong kind of folks. So anyway, that's my setup. And then I'll swing around here. This is what I'm doing today. I'm trying to clean up 
it was just bare batteries sitting over there on the floor and I didn't like that. I was I was nervous that I was gonna have a um, uh, you know a wrench fall down on it or something or you know, the kid starts has access to the batteries and you can play with it. So I wanted to clean it up and what I'm gonna do is I went out and bought one of those like cheap eighty dollar garden benches which has just a ton of storage in it and they're inexpensive and they're light and they're plastics so I can drill on it and stuff and that's where I'll be hiding these batteries. Um, let's see, to give you guys scale, I don't have a, I was going to put a dollar bill up, I don't have my dollar bill on me. This is an iPhone, right? So that gives you an idea of the size of these batteries. They're pretty big. Uh, they're 155 amp hours and uh, I made the mistake, I did some basic calculations and determined that, you know, uh, somewhere around 300 amp hours is what I would need for my solar setup to keep the refrigerator going and then peak loads for um, you know using the microwave and making smoothies and stuff in the kitchen and I was right I needed about 300 amp hours for that um, what I failed to realize and, and it's one of these things like you know it but then you, you just gloss over it because you're so excited to get all your solar stuff set up um, I made the mistake of uh, assuming that these would be discharged from 100% down to zero through the night and then somewhere around you know early morning they'd go from you know five ten percent back up to 100% and the problem with that as most people know with these sealed lead acids um, or AGMs is that even even though they're technically labeled as deep cycle uh, if you drain your batteries down to zero percent or in this case, you know, zero for these batteries is somewhere around like 10.5 volts. Uh, you will destroy, you will work these batteries to death and they won't last you but a few years or, or maybe one year, I don't know. Um, the, the convention that I've seen in a lot of places is that if you want to have these things last five to 10 years, you shouldn't go below 50%. And ideally you should be somewhere between 180% and just constantly cycling between there for the best longevity of these these batteries. So to fix that, I just threw money at this problem and doubled up on my batteries. So something to consider, uh, if you do your math, consider that you're gonna have to double up on batteries if you want to not um, cycle them too much. Um, these are very heavy batteries. They're from a company called VMAX. Uh, they call these charge tanks. And I stumbled across these um, I'm just doing a ton of research on trying to find the best deep cycle batteries. And these were actually developed out of a necessity that car audio enthusiasts had. They were going to like competitions where you like, I don't know, blow the clothes off of women kind of competitions. And uh, they just, they were bringing their car batteries to their knees and the alternators couldn't keep up and it's just get, getting ridiculous. And so this company came out and started building batteries for those competitions and so these were you know deep cycle and also could take um, high current draws without what I call browning out or dipping in voltage and uh, they people loved them and they they did really really well in that industry and then someone said hey all the same characteristics that you know for your car audio stuff would uh, work really well for a solar setup and then they just slapped a solar sticker on it that's my guess <laughs> I'm glad they did that's so um, these have worked out really, really well. I'm very pleased with these. Uh, but they're not, uh, you know, your typical car battery. They're almost 100 pounds each. So, I mean, you have to, like, lift with your legs when you're messing with these things. Uh, but uh, they're, they've got nice, really, really nice um, machine-threaded um, posts here. You see these? I mean, they're just... This is high quality stuff. I'm like, the, the attention to detail is very, very high. Um, I don't see a an origin sticker like made in Mexico or America or anything like that. So I'm not really sure. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if these were actually made in America. They just they just kind of reek of that that level of quality that we're accustomed to. Um, here's a close up. It's uh, vtanks.com. Uh, oh, they, they even have a torque specification for the um, uh, for the bolts that I mentioned earlier. Um, really, really nice batteries.
uh, if these weren't so heavy, I'd have one in my car. And, and actually, I, I, they they have a range of batteries, so I, I probably purchased one for my car, uh, no problem. Um, so anyways, the, the, these are the other thing that's unique about my solar setup is that I, I haven't seen anybody else running with these batteries for their solar setup, or at least not on YouTube. So that's it. Um, I'll probably come back here in a moment and show you what, I don't know, what these look like inside that box. Is that interesting? I don't know, maybe. Um, but I, I think it's going to make this, this section of the garage look a little bit cleaner um, and, you know, keep my wife happy so it doesn't look as geeky. It just looks like a, a nice bench, which, as we all know, will just collect crap, but whatever. Um, yeah, so I'll come back with a, a quick snapshot of what that looks like. All right, so now it's all buttoned up, and in my opinion, looks a lot cleaner. Just like a bench sitting underneath there. Of course, you wouldn't want to actually sit here too much; you'd be banging your head on inverters and stuff. But what are you gonna do? Um, from a distance, it looks pretty good. And as you all expected, nice and tidied up in here. I'll dress right dress. A little bit of room for expansion, which I reckon I'll do. Um, either adding more of these making models soon so they're not too out of um, out of phase from each other from when they were manufactured or the amount of life they have left in them. And you don't want to mix those too often so uh, I'll either buy a few more of those or um, mess around with another set of battery, another battery bank here as like a an A and a B or as we I mentioned earlier uh, battery one and two. Um, so, let's see, close this guy up, visually double check, I've got positives going to positives, alright, so, if all is well, I should be able to turn these on, oh, yes, that's kicked on, oh, Hear that little sound, it's the inverter. If you listen, um, you'll hear the uh, relay here kick on for this transfer box. Uh, this is a TS30. I think after about 20 seconds of having AC power, it clicks over. There it is. You see that load come on? That brief um, surge? That was probably the uh, refrigerator you know, being drawing off of this uh, inverter as opposed to the grid. Um, and now, that's it. So now my entire kitchen is now running off of that battery bank below um, from the energy that was stored in there during the day. Um, so, um, I'll, leave, I'll leave this with just a teaser of some of the expansions I have later, or additions. Um, i see some people add these, again, car audio because it's 12 volt. Uh, these big capacitors really close to your load um, to help um, with uh, peak draws coming from your load like when a compressor kicks on or something like that. Um, I've got some pretty lengthy though though thick cables going down so it'd be nice to um, have something like this near the, um, near the source of the load to try and dump to that in, in, in case it needs it. Um, also this comes with a goofy um, seven segment display on it, which I think will be kind of nice to kind of at a glance. So I'm coming in out of the garage, see uh, what the standing voltage is for the or my you know data charge, I guess. Um, but my problem now is that it's got to be close to here, so it's like, where do I put it? You know, if I put it here, now I've got to get longer cables. I, I kind of it would be ideal if I just did it like you know like that and then bolted it in, or maybe up here and went straight to it. But then my seven segments upside down, so. <laughs> Uh, I might put it here, but now we're off of this board that I put here to give it some support um, because I'm just there's just drywall behind here and conventional studs. So um, I don't know. I'm trying to play around this. I might reorganize the entire board here and move some things around. We'll see. And then also, uh, if we come over here and take a look at my um, my actual guy, let's see. Oh, I put it in lose memory. Yesterday, I uh, pulled in 260 amp hours 
which uh, if you mentioned as I mentioned earlier uh, that the, the entire bank is 620 amp hours and so it, that's that's about what I wanted I, you know only wanted to drain these things to, uh, close to 50% or better and, and not, not go below 50% and so that, that's close to 300 which is about half of um, 620 so there you go um, the system generated 3.6 kilowatt hours of energy uh, there's its peak amperages and uh, peak uh, wattages um, max voltage for these types of batteries is 14.4 because they're, uh, they're AGM which is absorbed glass mat batteries uh, I bought those because they're just um, th though I, I do have plans to vent this uh, this box that they're sitting in um, it's not as critical with those um, let's see there we go so my again to get back to my my next um, project with this for four hours out of the day <laughs> I float charged these or trickle charged them as some people refer to it as um, so that means at least in my uh, my eyes uh, that as soon as the sun comes up, this thing just starts sucking power out of the panels and just does a really great job of delivering that uh, to the batteries. And it tops them off in an hour and a half. So, um, or, or close to it, and then they float charge for another four hours. And uh, I'm, that's basically, for that amount of time, I'm just wasting that energy. The panels are doing close to nothing. They're just trickle charging these batteries. So my next plan is to um, utilize this aux uh, connection here, uh, which is designed to control a relay, and I'm planning on having this guy set to have this go high or low. I don't remember which one it is. I'd look at the, the specs, but have that trip a relay once this thing starts going into float, um, or maybe 20 or 30 minutes after it floats, or something like that. And then that relay, I'm planning on having it switch over a grid tie inverter that might sit about here and then start um, so like I said I'll be tying that back to the grid uh, my hope is to not waste any of that solar energy I mean the panels are expensive all this other gear is kind of expensive and uh, even if it wasn't expensive it just seems like a shame that you could be reducing your electric bill you know by you know six kilowatt hours or something like that I guess I guess four kilowatt hours I guess is the most potential I have <laughs> to do that um, but anyways um, the, um, that's that's the next project so stay tuned to, for that and other random projects from Julian if you find this thing valuable click subscribe um, so you can be updated when I come out with new videos and uh, so thanks for joining me on another one of Julian's random projects thanks